My name is Claude Locke. I'm the managing director of MyBassCoach.com. And today, I'd like to introduce you to a very special friend of mine. His name is Clay Dyer. In March of 2006, Clay made his FLW Tour debut on Lake Pickwick in Alabama. In that fishing event, Clay finished ahead of the reigning FLW Tour Championship winner and the reigning Bassmaster Classic champion. They were the holders at that time of the two most prestigious and lucrative titles in all of professional bass fishing. What makes this remarkable rookie accomplishment even more amazing is that Clay was born without any legs, without a left arm, and without a right hand. I've always been a competitor at heart. I've always wanted to win, it didn't matter what I was doing. And when I was young, around the age of four or five, I started out catfishing and you know, I always thought well, it's pretty cool to be able to be out in the outdoors all the time and be able to, to hunt and fish and do those kind of things. I started playing sports then and you know, started getting more active in sports in my teenage years. And through all the through all the you know, all the childhood into the teenage years, growing up into being a young adult, I thought, you know, I would love to be able to do something professionally, be able, be able to be a professional athlete. And of course, in all reality, I didn't know if I'd ever be able to get drafted, you know, to play in the NFL or NBA or something, you know, having having this kind of uh, you know this kind of physical build. But I really felt like that, you know, that maybe fishing was something that I could take to a national level and be able to be a professional angler. And after watching a lot of these guys on television and watching how they did it, I thought, you know, I can do that. I can I can take it to that level. I knew I had I knew I had everything it took to get me there. You know, I knew I had a heart and a mind and a soul, and that was those were the three in my opinion, three most important qualities in order to help me to achieve my goals and achieve my dreams. So I started out fishing at a, you know, at a local level, on, a, on fishing a lot of local team trails and tournaments and everything, and then actually started progressing up you know, through the state and regional ranks and as I was in my teenage years. And then after I graduated high school in 1996, uh, actually while I was in college, I started trying to pursue professional angling as, as a career and uh, went in head first and haven't looked back yet. <laughs> You know, of all the things I do in fishing, probably one of the hardest things is actually tying on tying on the lures. And um, to, to figure out how to do it, I actually used to take them and bounce them on my hand and try to run the line through the hook eyes, or I'd lay them on the floor and try to run the line through the hook eyes. And I realized real quick, like I was getting nowhere in a hurry because it was taking forever to do it. And I thought, there, there's got to be a better way to do this. So I started trying to bounce the lure on my hand, put the line in my mouth and you know, just doing what felt comfortable. And, and as I kept eliminating you know, through trial and error and doing what felt comfortable, I was able to figure out you know, the way of balancing like I do, taking the line in my lips and you know, using my teeth to guide it through the, through the uh, hook eyelet and actually taking and, and looping it you know, in an overhand knot and taking the bait and putting it through the loop and then pulling, you know, pulling it down tight. And uh, the way I you know, actually finish it up is when I get the actual knot almost completed and I take the hook point and stick it in my hand and take the line and put it in my mouth and, or, or take the hook and actually put it in my teeth and take the line and wrap it around my hand and pull it down tight. And uh, just about every time it gets ugly. We, we draw some blood just about every time we do it. Well, you know, when, when I was looking at um, trying to become a professional angler and I realized what the other guys had that maybe I might have been missing, you know, it was nothing more than the hands and the fingers. I knew I had everything else and, and I knew I could figure out a way to be able to, to overcome the obstacle to get there and I knew basically that it took that I could use my mind to be able to to focus on the resources I had versus resources you know that I didn't have. You know, it'd been very easy for me, very easy for me to look down and say, okay, I need two hands, I need ten fingers to be able to tie the knots, throw the reels, you know, drive the steering wheel when I'm driving the boat, all those things. But at the same time, I knew I had a mind that that would focus on the resources I had, which was you know having the um, the heart to be able to you know put the passion towards being able to to stay determined enough to, to figure out how to do it. You know, I thought, well, I may not have the same resources everybody else has, but I've, I've, got the, you know, I've got the mind to be able to focus on it. I've got the, the heart to be able to have the passion to figure it out. Whenever I go to make the cast, the way I prepare myself to cast is, is I lock the rod handle in between my collarbone and my jawbone in, in a socket like that, and I apply the pressure to the reel with my chin to disengage the line button, and then I actually put my, my bottom lip on the line to feather the line to keep it you know, from, from going out. I take my arm and brace under the rod and it actually starts you know, into a, it looks much like a golf swing, you know, while I pivot my upper body, you know, from side to side or from front to back to be able to get the rod, you know, the, the, the rod momentum started to actually get the lure speed and everything, you know, that I need to get the lure going in, in, in the direction I need it to. And then I usually, I actually use my bottom lip to, uh, to take the pressure off the, the reel spool where the line can accelerate out and I feathered the speed of the spool by my lip by applying pressure to the line. 
And so therefore I just tried to keep focused on what I had and to be able to have them have to maximize my potential to be able to get to where, you know, to, to get to where I wanted to be at. I think a lot of times people wonder how I've gotten to where I'm at in life. And the, the big thing that I've always tried to do is focus on that I had a heart and a mind and a soul to be able to accomplish the things I wanted to do. And with me, to me of heart, I want to have the dedication and the perseverance to be able to overcome the obstacles that are setting forth in front of me. You know, everything from learning how to do such as writing, such as throwing football, such as making telephone calls on my cell phone, you know, doing, doing the little things I need to do. All that has had to come from, from, from the passion of wanting to figure out how to, how to overcome those things and be able to put the determination and the perseverance and then just to keep on keeping on until I figure out a way to, 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 you know, to make that work. The next time you have an obstacle standing in front of your dream that's keeping you from living your dream, remember to have the perseverance, have the, have the heart to, to keep on trying and not ever give up. Also remember to focus on the resources you have versus the resources you're missing. And when you can apply those two things to your life, always remember to have the faith in yourself and the faith in God that He's given you the strength to be able to overcome anything that, that any of these obstacles that may be in your life. Now I promise you, if you'll take and you'll apply these different principles in your life, you'll be able to overcome any kind of obstacle that may be facing you.